There are several personal unsolicited finance advices on the internet. And so in this video, so we would be breaking these down and explain why they are not really beneficial. First off, put all your savings into a long-term investment, like an index fund. If you're thinking of investing all of your savings into a passively managed index fund and the hope to build wealth, then you're going to be working your 9 to 5 job for a very long time. Also, if you're on a low income and you're not earning a huge amount and not able to save much of your income, then your focus shouldn't be investing in the stock market. It should be investing in yourself first to increase your earnings potential. There are a lot of other things that you can invest in that will generate you more returns and higher earnings and higher growth a lot quicker than the stock market will, such as investing in courses, investing in learning and ideas, and new side hustles, investing in new business ventures, etc. At the end of the day, you should have an amount that you set aside that you will use to better yourself and better your knowledge and start projects that you have always put off. This will lead you to your goals even quicker. Generally speaking, you're probably earning less now than you will in 5, 10, and 15 years time. So whilst you always want to be saving a percentage of your income, it's better to borrow a portion from your future self and your future earnings and invest that into products now. Because if it fails, then you can learn quickly you can fail forward and you can move on reinvesting your money earlier and into high growth opportunities that have the potential to take off. It is far better than just saving every single penny and putting it into an index fund. Number 2 Hustle There are so many YouTube, Instagram, and Tech Talk accounts that are dedicated to the hustle. Just grind as hard as you can and work as hard as you can. You'll eventually get the nice car or that dream house but the narrative with hustle culture at the moment is that at any cost you just have to keep on going. And that's where the danger lies. It isn't about speed or the hours you put in. It's about the direction that you're going in. You can be working 12, 13, 14 hours a day at terminal speed and you can feel like you're really busy and really productive but you're actually not getting anywhere. The portrayal of hustle culture is just work, work and work out as hard as you can to achieve your goals as the same as being portrayed and rewarded on things like social media. There are so many accounts dedicated to this. But in reality, that work, work, and work culture should be replaced with sprint and then press spread as hard as you can. And whilst you're working on something and you're inspired and you're passionate and through your creative juices are flowing, then keep sprinting and then reset recesses. And then decide whether you're ready to go again and which direction you're going to continue going in. The second reason why hustle culture is bad for you is because it's ruining your health. You probably don't need anyone to tell you that working too much is not good for your health. And one of the biggest causes about working too much causes is increases in stress levels, which increases your cortisol levels. Recent studies have revealed that the major cause for most of almost every disease that we have in the world at the moment is stress. So don't go down the hustle culture for the sake of your own health. Pain points now that you just dismiss and that you ignore will just get worse later on. And if you don't look after your health, then it could potentially just stop you from working completely. So it's just not worth it. Number 3. Read everything you can. Just because you're well-read doesn't mean that you're well-educated or that you will be successful. And that's because even though there are a number of people that are very well-read, they have probably spent their time reading the wrong things. The problem with just saying read everything you can is that there is so much junk out there. There are as many kind of authors as there are people. And there are a lot of people who write a lot of junk. There is no sensor for reliable information on the internet. Even though there are people who are very well read, they may have just read things in a very wrong order. If you start out reading a set of things that are false or loosely true at best, they form the foundation of your word view. And then when new things come in, you judge whether they are accurate or based on the found stations that you've already built. So that foundation is super important when it comes to reading. If you want to read about evolution, read Charles Darwin. If you want to read about macroeconomics, read Adam Smith. He says start with the philosophers of the economy, the originals. Stick to the classics so you have the enough of the world view and then straight into the interpretations. If you have all the time in the world and then yeah of course then yeah, of course, pick up every book that you can get your hands on. 
in the right order. But if you only have a finite amount of time available in your day, you're working full time, you're studying, or whatever, then pick up books that will give you the edge over time, that will have an impact on where you are 5-10 years from now. Choose books that will actually build your core foundational knowledge. Number 4. You want to pay off all your debts as soon as possible. Being debt-free is a financial milestone. We often hear a lot of people striving for paying off all of your debt. However, it doesn't always make sense. And often, it can be the case that you're leveraged with capital. A good decisions can have a far larger earning impact than hard work will. Having money and using money can often accelerate things like if you're buying a house with your own money and your own savings, then you could probably buy one house and use up for your savings. But if you're using or leveraging the bank's money to buy a house, then you have to put a portion of your own funding into it and get multiple houses. The key is to know how to manage debt and recognize the good debt from the bad debt. If a debt's interest rate and what you're paying for it is less than the returns that you're getting from the debt, you actually end up benefiting from it. So you want to be thinking about whether you're going to making money from the debt and whether you're buying an asset that will generate good returns and that will appreciate over time. Number 5. Focus on saving. It's so obvious and it is common sense, but it is so overlooked. Studies show that this is even more applicable to women, as by nature, women are more risk averse. And there is science to back this. One of the reasons what that causes is because of the gender differences in brain activity involved in analyzing risk and preparing for action that makes men more willing to take on higher risk. We are seeing inflation at its highest level in 40 years. And these are things that are just out of control no matter how good we are at saving. These bills will always eat into what we can save. There is no cap to the earning side. But there is always a cap to how much you can save. There is a lot of bad financial advice out there that is disguised as good advice. And maybe you completely disagree with them because you've had experience that has shown you otherwise. But what it really comes down to is that your priorities should be to educate yourself about personal finance and decide what is best for you. The more you know about money and what you hope your retirement looks like, the better you can plan for it. And this whole process will help you learn the importance of having managed finances. Although what the internet sells sometimes is so impactful, yet there is a lot of information out there that is based on one person's advice and that you have to do a little bit more plugging to decide whether or not it's applicable to you. Thanks for watching. Until the next one.